Hi everyone, I'm Claudio Encina. Welcome to another series of personal stories. Today's guest is really special. He's been number one in Century 21 in terms of transactions in New South Wales and Australia, number two in terms of gross commission in New South Wales and Australia, and now he's actually left where he was number one in his market to a whole brand new area. We're really gonna see his journey, the struggles, the challenges, and now obviously going through his successes exactly what it's taken him to get here. I'd like you to welcome Nick Pappas from Century 21 in Maroubra. Nick, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, thank you. Nick, I suppose let's just take it right back first to when you first got into real estate. What were you doing before getting into real estate? Did you um, left school? I was an electrician by trade. Yeah. Um, and just had, uh, always had a passion for real estate. Uh, tried to get into real estate though from when I left school, but uh, I just said I was too young, I looked too young, and it would never work. You still look young. Yeah, I still look young, <laughs> that's the secret. But um, no, that's just, that's how I got into real estate. So it's just, I was an electrician, yeah. um, did it for three or four years, and uh, I remember one day I just went up to my boss, who was my, you know, at the time, I said to him, look, I, I want to really do real estate, can you just give me two weeks holidays so yeah. I can go trial it? Yeah. And if I love it, I said, you know, do you mind if I don't come back? And he said, Nick, you know what, it was always my dream to do that as well. Yeah. And he said, I can't believe you're telling me this, he goes, go yeah. for it. Yeah. So he gave me the opportunity and I went to work for then my girlfriend's father. Yes. Um, and we got on, I, he thought I would do well, so he gave me a job and I just never looked back. I just um, started creating my dream and my goals and just, you know, wanting to be better and better every day and yeah, just Fantastic. It just ended up here. <laughs> yeah. And how old were you then when you started? I was 20 years old. 20 years old. Yeah. Got and, and straight into sales or did you? Straight into sales. Yeah. Right. Just, um, I remember the first thing I did was when I got into the office, they said, uh, here's a stock list, um, here's a bunch of buyers, ring them and match them up yeah. and uh, put them in your car, drive them around, show them wow. houses. And <laughs> it was that simple, you know, yeah, it just yeah. started to happen. How the days change, Dave. We don't drive people in nah. the house anymore. It's like maybe that's a property. It's very funny these days, yeah, when you tell people that they're like, you put them in your car and yeah. you them, it's like, yeah, put them in my car. Wow. Was like, like, it only seems like yesterday that was happening to yeah. me. So, yeah, it's changed very quickly in my eyes. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, there was no midweek open houses back then. It was all by appointment. And, you know, Saturday you have only a few open homes. That was now 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Um, but yeah, probably in the last five or six years, I think real estate's really taking a different turn as, yeah. as to how we're doing our marketing and everything else. So yeah, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot, the, the scape of real estate, hasn't Correct. it? Yeah. So tell me, Nick, then, you know, that was Century 21 in Fairfield yeah. and you, you did extremely well, obviously, yeah. you know, hearing the numbers that you've got into, in terms of your GCI and so forth. But what were some of the things, you know, for some of the viewers out there who have just joined real estate thinking, okay, you know, I'm struggling at the moment, you know, I'm, I'm feeling my wheels are spinning or not getting any traction out there. What's some of the keys to your success that got you into, into Fairfield and, and became number one and a dominant agent? Um, the, the, the one thing that I did, I remember when I first got into real estate was um, I, I looked at who the top performers were in our area yeah. and um, I started trying to, to, to hang out with them and become friends with them yeah. um, and just try and learn off them. Um, someone that was, and you know, I still idolize a lot in real estate is my father-in-law, like he's, he's a gun real estate agent the guy's, you know, he's 65, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll get upset with him if he did this. Yeah. But he was just um, so enthusiastic and he just knew so much about the, yeah. the industry. And I just sit there and listen to him talk. And I, I just listened to, to what he did. And um, I just follow his enthusiasm yeah. that, he, that, that he gave out. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I would advise is if you're out there looking and you've just started real estate, it isn't going to be easy. I can tell you that now. If you think it's going to be easy, it's probably the wrong industry. Yeah. But it can be really, really rewarding yes. once it starts moving. And I just went through a transition now where I left, you know, an office where last year I wrote 1.2 million GCI. Yeah. Um, I earned great money, and I've just come into a completely new area. I've actually just bought an office on my own. Yeah. I'm um, closer to home, so I can be around my family and you know, friends and that. Mm -hmm. And. Um, you know, I'm probably only going to write about 400, maybe 500 GCI yeah. if things go well, which is like really hard for me. Like <laughs> I'm struggling to cope with that. Yeah. But what I'm noticing is that in the last five months now that I've had this office going, um, things are starting to pick up for me. And it's just because I'm doing the things that are basic. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm on the phone talking to people. I'm helping people. I'm getting my name out there. Um, I'm getting myself 
uh, I'm surrounding myself with other good professionals as well. Like I get mm -hmm. coaching done through you. Yeah. I also have another coach that does a bit of lifestyle coaching with me. Yeah. Um, because sometimes you just got to keep your head level. Absolutely. And I think in real estate, it's very easy. Like I was speaking to a young guy that's been in the, in the game for one year, and he said, "I'm really burnt out." And I said, "Look." It's not your boss's fault. He works for another company. I said, it's not your boss's fault. It's no one else's fault but yours mm -hmm. because you're not doing anything mm -hmm. to actually change that. And I think if you burn out in real estate, you'll never want to go back into it. So yeah. you've got to balance it. Yeah. Uh, but keep to the basics, you know, talk to as many people as you can. The more people you talk to, the more doors you're going to get into, yeah. the more doors that are going to open for you. And then you start signing up business. And once you start signing up business, you're going to meet more people and then more doors will open. And it just starts becoming yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. and it just goes and then you know once it starts going it doesn't stop and then you start saying i can't breathe and i can't sleep yeah. at night and, but that's that's all part of the fun exactly nick I, I remember us having a conversation when we first started and uh, you know you're talking about you know you made this really big move but also hearing a little bit about you know you had a bit of a health scare yeah, last yeah, year yeah. And, and you talk about stress and it can really you know, a lot of agents can get quite stressed here. And, yeah. I'll, and I'll talk about like different energy levels and, and, and so forth. And, and you talk about burnout and yeah. you know, that advice you're giving to that young agent. Um, you went through that, yeah, that, I did. that bit of, yeah. of, of burnout. Um, how have you been able to turn that around now? And especially in such a short time, then taking the challenge mm. of starting a new office in a new marketplace. I, I think um, it was getting my mindset around the fact that um, it was all, I, I did it all to myself. Mm. because I thought that if I just work 24 hours, seven days a week, I'm just going to be the most successful agent to ever walk the planet. Yeah. Um, and that might be the case, but your body and your mind can't actually do that. Yeah. You know? So the thing that I learned was I had to balance my work and, 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 and my life, and I had to learn to probably start saying no to certain things in my work life. Yeah. So you had people, I used to get people to just come and sit at, you know, just come and sit at my desk, you know, yeah. and they talked to me for an hour because I'd listen. And that was great because I love listening to people, I love helping people, but there's certain things that I've got to take control of and, yeah. you know, I had to sort of take control of what I'm doing in my life yeah. to work harder yeah. um, and, and work smarter, you know. Yeah. So um, I started to manage my time better. I started picking when I had time to sit down with people that just needed help yeah. and I had time when I had to sit down and put my energy straight into work yes. and then I started to get some time back. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I've got to make a new, once I started shifting and I saw that change happening, mm -hmm. um, the next thing I did was say, okay, what, what else do I want out of life? Yeah. And I wanted to be around my family more and my kids, I've got three young children, as, as you know, yes. and, and my wife and I yeah. thought, you know what, I'm going to go and open up an office close to home. Yeah. Um, and everyone said, you're mad, you're nuts, and I probably am. <laughs> but you know what, the challenge, like it's, it's energising. You know? yeah. like I, I, I wake up in the morning and I just can't wait because I think, you know what, I'm going to get another listing, I'm going to make another sale. Yeah. And that's what energises me, you know. And I don't know, in 12 years' time, I might want to do something else. I've been I, don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I really yeah. don't know. But at the moment, it's exactly where I want to be. Yeah. And I've come to realise that what you want is what you deserve. And if you feel you deserve it, you'll... You know, you'll get it. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about your mindset yes. and, and remembering that you know you can't feel sorry for yourself because you do what you do to yourself. That's right, exactly. So it sounds like it's not you work for what you want. It's almost like you want the life you want, and then work comes behind. Behind it, yeah. So you make that fit into your yeah. like. Like I want, I, I'm big on my family life. I'm big on you know having fun. So yeah. I thought, okay, well, I, I, I can still work, have fun because I love what I do. Yeah. And still have my family because I'm yeah. only working five minutes down the road from home. Fantastic. And it's at the moment working out yeah. just fine. <laughs> I think anyway. Yeah. So it's been five months now since you've opened up the doors yep. of Century 21 in Maroubra. Yep. And one of the things, obviously, you said earlier in this interview is getting back to the basics. Yeah. Have you been finding that, like, the, you know, you talk about like going back to door knocking and yeah. a bit of cold calling and, and meeting some of the business owners in the area and, and just sticking to some of the basics? It's actually really been really fun because. Yeah. Um, my business at Fairfield got to the point where my phone would just ring, Nick, you want to sell, come over, what time are you going to be there? And it, in some respects, got a bit too easy. Yeah. And um, I thought, you know what, it got boring. Mm. You know, I've got to fight for the business, yes. which is really good, you know? And it feels good when you knock on someone's door and say, you know what, we actually, how ironic, we're thinking of selling. And it's yeah. like, oh, great, you know, like, I'm here. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and it's, it's just really fun, you know? And, I, and I'm, I'm really enjoying being a real estate agent. Like, yeah. You know, I, I have a saying that there's these um, sort of movie star real estate agents, you yeah. know, and I'm not bagging anyone and saying no. that, but my job, I believe, is trying to help people yeah. get into being 
at like you know a property owner or selling their property and giving them the right advice, being professional. Yeah. I, I, and I love being able to do that yeah. rather than just being someone that you know um, tries to live some lavish lifestyle as some yeah. agent. Yeah. Um, no, I just enjoy really getting out there doing the you know itty gritty. Yeah. You know, it's just really fun. Fun. Yeah. 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 Like, so you, you're glowing. You, yeah, you're like, I enjoy it. I really do enjoy. It. I love the challenge. You know. No. I'd rather not actually own my own office. I'd rather just be a salesperson because <laughs> I don't have to worry about anything. Just be on the road 24-7. Just and focus on what you love doing. Exactly. Helping people. That's it. I yeah. love it. I really do. No. Nick, that's fantastic. So you've had major success already, which is great yeah. since opening the doors. You're building a team already of, of some great individuals around in your team. Just to finish off today's you know, personal stories edition, what's your definition of success? Being happy with who you are. Mm. That's, that's the big thing that I learned. Uh, I thought, six, I, I sort of, someone that I spoke to once said to me, Nick, what does success look like to you? And, you know, when I sat down and really thought about it, I thought, you know what, I don't know what it looks like. Like, mm. you know, it, it's not driving the fancy car because I've got a nice car and, you know what, that doesn't make me feel any better. Um, having a big home didn't make me feel any better. Um, I, what really made me feel like I'm successful is being able to be myself work around what I want out of my life, yeah. Yeah. not worry about what everyone else wants. And when you can feel like that, I think you, you really are successful because you know, you're happy within yourself. Absolutely, well defined. Nick, thanks for joining us Pleasure, on Personal Stories. Guys, as you can hear, Nick, take the challenges, take the risks, and obviously you will go and have every journey and success that you're looking out for.